I'm true blue Lakers, and uh, we had some wonderful teams. But I want to tell you guys about the best team you never heard of. Basketball soul, Harlem son, second to none. On the shoulders of giants. Today's arenas are so big, cavernous, built to accommodate a lot of people, a lot of facilities in there so people will spend money. And Jerry, that's yeah. what you want your fans to do, of course. Yeah. But um, uh, the lifeblood of any franchise, I think, are, are the amenities that you have around a, a, a stadium. And I can remember going on the road years ago, some of the arenas we played in were really small. Fans were closer. Um, the seats, everyone's right on top of each other. And the one thing that I really noticed more than anything, when, when, when I was on the road, I loved to play on the road. To me, it was more of a challenge to play on the road because I always felt that your average players and the players that weren't quite as productive as you are, were, uh, many of them, they would lose their confidence really, really quickly. And I always felt it was much more of a challenge to, to win on the road than it was at home. And the arena, somebody said, well, what about all the noise? Well, the, the arenas were noisy. But frankly, I never, I never heard anybody. I never looked in the stands when I played. Never, never looked in. I, when I ran on the court, I never looked at anyone. I had my head down. Uh, just something I didn't notice people. I was able to kind of immerse myself in that small little arena. And then toward the end of our career, obviously, we started to see bigger buildings and and a different kind of building. And now today, we have all these incredible buildings oh, around the world. You know, the Chicago Stadium was an incredibly loud building. And before we moved over to the United Center, we, we took decibel readings, and we found that the, that the noise in the Chicago Stadium was the same as a jet plane taking off. So when we built the United Center, we knew it was going to be bigger and it would be hard to make it noisy, but we put a lot of baffles in, so when the sound goes up, it gets sent down. And it actually is almost as noisy as the old building. I, I kind of enjoyed the fact that the, the various arenas had a personality. You know, when you, when you went some to, to a certain arena, it, it would have a, a, a person. I, I always like remember um, Kobo in, in Detroit. That's right. Because it was really soulful, and they had this great organ player, and the place would be rocking. How about the barber? Oh, uh, yeah, the barber. <laughs> the barber. Uh, but you know, they, every every particular place had its personality. Boston Gardens had a distinct personality. You know, the Madison Square Garden. Had a distinct personnel. Nobody played in more buildings than Marcus. Oh, yeah, he, he's he's in some great places. He played in people's front yards. <laughs> you, you take in my, in my hometown, Sand Springs, Oklahoma. You know, first, we had a, didn't have an arena, we had a gym. It seated maybe uh, 200 people at the very most. And uh, whenever we played a ball game, you know, you'd almost have to try to schedule two games in order to get the people in, you know, so everybody could see it. Played for the same script. But, beg your pardon? Was it the same script? Same old script. <laughs> same old script. Yeah. You know, and you, if you varied from it, then you were out of, out of the gym. <laughs> you know, when I was uh, a rookie, uh, we won the NBA championship. And the found were in Boston, St. Louis. And when we went to St. Louis to play. Keel Arena, right? Yeah. I was the only black guy in the building. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, I was the only black guy on either team. Right. <laughs> and there were no black guys in the fans that I could. And uh, I found that the fans in uh, St. Louis were very creative. <laughs> in, in what the, way? In, in the names that they could call you. In, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't get away with it. <laughs> and so, uh, years later, I was in New York, and this kid asked me, how is it to play in Madison Square Garden? I said, well, I'm really not into buildings. Um, 
because I had disciplined myself that no matter where I was playing, nothing went on outside the boundary. Nothing had any impact except what went on on the floor. And so, uh, basically, I was uh, tone deaf. I didn't, I didn't hear anything. Uh, in fact, uh, because of my experiences in St. Louis, our bank used to accuse me of playing better there than any other building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I took the attitude that uh, these people are not really friendly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they didn't enjoy your style of play. <laughs> right. and so what I wanted to do to make sure that we won the game so they could all go home disappointed. <laughs> <laughs>